The German defence minister has resigned, blaming media for its long, months-long focus on her. Christine Lambrecht has battled scrutiny since war in Ukraine began. Many have been critical of Germany's hesitation to send military aid. And she leads as the country faces new pressure to let other nations send German-made tanks, particularly Poland. Under Lambrecht, defence capabilities also came into question. Some saying German army is ill-equipped in light of Russia's war. Alex Strub is the former Prime Minister of Finland, joins me now. Well, what do you make of it? She's gone? I mean, she seemed highly accident-prone in terms of being what, what she would say. Well, I mean, all politicians are accident prone, but I, I think to a certain extent, if we look at Germany, what's happening right now, it's quite complicated because they are trying to do a Zeitenwende, a complete U-turn in their foreign policy. But we're seeing a little bit more Zeitenslalom. You know, there are different types of messages coming. For Finland, it was kind of easier to change tack. For us, it was always not about ideology. It was about something practical. But I think Germany has moved a lot. So she's gone, but does the policy change? No, I don't think it usually does. I mean, uh, when you are defense minister, you have a very strong civil service that carries you, and I think the policy of the German government won't change either. It's been very much driven, obviously, uh, by the chancellor himself and also the foreign minister. So I don't see a change in German policy as such. As I look at this year's Davos, um, two things strike me. Three things. Firstly, there aren't the same number of leaders who've come this year. Now, arguably, that might be because there's not the same necessity. That's the first one. Secondly, the issues don't seem as clearly defined besides Russia, Ukraine. There's a lot more civil society. There's a lot more social issues than, than there have been in the past. Yeah, I guess I think there are about 600 CEOs and about 50 heads of state and government. If I had a choice, I think we should be talking about the new world of disorder, because basically what we're seeing is now the, the post-Cold War, which has ended. And I think it's an end of an era as well for the West. And I, I would like to start to have this conversation about, you know, how will the West fit into the rest of the world? Because the war in Ukraine, it's not about Russia versus the West. It's also about the West and the rest. Well, you say that, but isn't that being uh, sort of pumping oxygen into what's really a rather simple issue, which is that Russia attacked Ukraine? Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, if you look at things I mean, on the ground, yes. But, but, but so to, 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 I just wanted to, uh, related to that, India continues to buy Russian oil. China, the same, supporting. If those other countries were to make it clear to Russia that, this, that they're not going to support them, it would be a very different game. I actually think that India and China have tilted a little bit more towards the West than I had expected. And what we'll find out, I think, is that India is going to take a little bit of a middle ground here. We might see some kind of cooperation between the EU and India in the long run. I would still argue, Richard, that the year 2022 was a horrible year for autocrats. Look at what happened in China with zero COVID policy and look at the failures of Putin. So we are in a messy world right now. We're in a fragmented world and we don't know where it's going to end up. That's why I think Davos should talk about a new world order instead of focusing on specific issues. Also related to this, of course, within the EU, we've still got the problems of Poland in terms of uh, the judicial issues. You've still got Viktor Orban is now the longest serving EU prime minister and it's hard to know where Hungary stands. Yeah, but you have to understand that the European Union is not a utopia. Basically, it always deals with things in three phases. Number one, there's a crisis. Number two, there's chaos. And number three, there's a suboptimal solution. You always... So, give so, me that again. Know, give me that again. Yeah, number so one... Crisis, chaos, and suboptimal solution. But... And I always say that suboptimal solution is depressing. No, but that's the w way in which the world is. Not depressing, but we don't live in a perfect world. I actually think we should take some positives from the fact that the EU dealt well with COVID. It has dealt well with the war in Ukraine and it's trying to deal with the energy crisis. This is what the world is about. You know, you and I, we met here in Davos probably since 2013. And every year there's a crisis. And every year we come out of it and survive and the world goes on. So if we start to live and learn from our imperfections, I think we make some improvement. Now, I want to take you to the board. Sure. To get you to, first of all, choose a color. You have a blue or a green? Okay, I would go for the blue. Oh. Yes, because it's the, you know, it's a blue and white. It's the color of my country. 
I thought you were going to go, uh, knowing you, Alex, I thought you were going to go for the green. For I know I'm a little bit greenish, but I'm hidden <laughs> behind the blue. You know? All right, well, have a blue, have a blue. Okay. Now, let me just remind you, on the board, so it's the worry board, we have deliberately taken climate you, as not an option. Okay. We've, that's a given. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's always the one that you'd all go for otherwise. Yeah. So this is your worry board. You can either add, uh, for example, the OECD added democracies, inflation. Where are you going? Okay, I'm going to go to come, Ukraine. Come on, do a bit of drawing. Yeah, sure. So, You're Richard, Prime Minister, you can yeah, draw. You will know, Richard, that Finland has a 1,340 kilometer long border with right? Russia. Yeah. So therefore, for me, of course, Ukraine uh, and the energy crisis is the key one. And my big fear here is escalation of the war. And uh, having said that, I hope that... Let's it give a circle, then. Yeah, Ukraine, right. definitely. An escalation is my big fear. Not a fear that it would escalate and spill over to Finland, a soon-to-be NATO country, but in general, uh, escalation and a protracted war. On that question of Finland, I'm having my pen back. <laughs> you knew I'd do. I would have taken you it. Right? Done, you would have done. You would have. Will Turkey give in? Uh, I think. Finns and Swedes have been very calm, cool and collected. Well, maybe not so much the Swedes in their later statements. Well, uh, I would assume that Finland and Sweden hopefully are members, full members of NATO by midsummer uh, towards July, the summit, uh, NATO summit that takes place, I think, in Vilnius. They're going to have to give more ground or Erdogan's going to have to give in. Let's see what happens. Oh, you're the, the ever Turkish. You are such the diplomat. Come no, off the fence. No, no I'm, I'm an academic nowadays, but I'm an academic who wants Finland to be in NATO, and therefore I am sure that we will find a solution. How good to see you, sir. Thank really you good, too. as always, here at Davos. Very grateful for you. Thank you, sir, uh, for joining us. Now, there are about four inches of snow.